Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro Movement. No, this is not the day where we're going to tell you the story of how we are transitioning from urban water into movement. Today's the day where we are going to introduce a concept called bounded randomness. Now in the last episode, we set out the reason, the rationale for why variety of movement is a key fundamental component of our movement practice. In this episode, we're gonna talk about this concept of bounded randomness and how that manifests itself to give us variety in our movement practice. Because here's the thing, if you just take what I said in the previous episode about variety and really subtle but huge amounts of variety being a really important part of a healthy and sustainable long-term movement practice, then your next question should be, how do I apply that? However, if you try and apply that by simply going out and going, right, okay, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to make sure I move in a whole bunch of different ways. It's really tough and it takes a huge amount of energy because as we talked about in the last episode, our bodies are fundamentally programmed to seek efficiencies. They're fundamentally programmed to narrow down and keep doing things the same way time and time and time again. And that's okay for our ancestors in the distant past, or the not so distant past to be honest, because they lived in a highly varied world which pulled in one direction with lots of variety, and then their bodies and their efficiency pulling in the other, so they balance each other out. The modern world doesn't have the variety, so the efficiency pulls too far in one direction. But because innately we seek out this efficiency, we seek out, ah, I found a way to do it, I'm always gonna do it that way, trying to manually overcome that and be like, okay, I know I need to do a whole bunch of different things, so I'm going to do 20 different variations of pull-ups. Suddenly, like, it requires such a high level of input that it's not really sustainable. So instead, we think about this with a concept called bounded randomness, which is effectively trying to, the word bounded here, applies to putting a bounds around the edge of this and that bounds is at what safety so we're not talking about just straight out randomness which is do whatever you want we're not talking about that because obviously that would be unsafe but bounded randomness is going look within the bounds of what is safe human movement we want to add some random elements into that so you'll see in our movement practice that we introduce this randomization into it. And so if it's a movement class that we're teaching, for example, you will see this manifest in a few different ways. Fundamentally, there are three different ways to get that randomness into our movement or that we get that randomness into our movement. We get it through tools, we get it through environments, and we get it through people. Let's look at each. Let's look at an example of each. An example might be, if we're talking about tools, a reaction ball. So a reaction ball is a bouncy ball. You get them in different sizes. Maybe the size of a tennis ball, what we might think of here. That's oddly shaped. So if you bounce it off a wall, it might not just bounce straight back to you the way you expect a tennis ball to, but it could bounce off in a whole bunch of odd directions. So what that then does is adds an element of randomness as to where I'm gonna have to go to catch the thing, right? So suddenly I am no longer totally in control of what's going on, but I'm being pulled to get more variety in a whole bunch of different ways. So you can take a tool like that and you can play then a whole bunch of different games with it. For example, so tools that add randomization. Another one is environments. So finding situations, the modern world is incredibly flat and linear here. Now behind me, we might have a bank with a tree and it kind of mimics nature there but spreading out the whole other direction in front of me is a flat grassy field. So much of the modern world resembles that flat grassy field, but the natural environment is far more uneven, jagged, unbalanced, right? So compare going for a walk on the street versus going for a bushwalk. The amount of subtle different variety that you might pick up as you do that is a way to get variety in 
the environment that you're in can add that random element. Now, obviously, from a practical point of view, we have a movement facility. We can't necessarily bring the natural environment into the movement facility, but we can mimic that by making the surfaces that we work on. Maybe we're doing balance one day. We're not just going to balance on the same type of beam. Maybe we're going to have a whole bunch of different types of beams. Maybe they're not going to be completely flat on the surface. For example, so using the environment that you're working within to add that randomization in the same way that the natural environment would. The third component of this is people. Working with a partner on a task, playing a game. You could think about this in sports, like wrestling. The component that you, the, the, the opponent, not component, opponent, that you would wrestle with, not that we wrestle in our classes, but that that person might be wrestling with, is exerting forces on that person's body that the, the, the person can't predict or isn't generating themselves. So you then have to respond to whatever that person has done. So we can play games based upon that. So kind of drawing in a couple of examples that we've mentioned previously of say having a ball and a balancing exercise. Well, you might be doing a balancing exercise, but you might have a partner throwing a ball to you. And depending on where they throw the ball, you have to respond while still being balanced. See how that adds in randomization. Depending on what your partner does, you have to respond. And from your point of view, that's fairly random. It's not random from the partner who's throwing the ball at you because they can control where it goes with reasonable accuracy. But for you, that's the randomness. So, this key tenant, and this plays out in our literal practice, in our movement facility, our practice, our movement practice, what you might see in a class, you see a lot of the applications of tools, environments slash surfaces, surfaces in our facility more so than environments overall, and people as a way to add huge amounts of variety to, to things that you might otherwise see in a fitness context. Okay, that's it for this episode. That is a description of how we can use bound, the concept of bounded randomness and certain tools, environments, and people to introduce that randomness to introduce the variety that we need for a healthy and sustainable and safe in the long term movement practice. If you like this episode, if you'd like to know more about what it is we do at ID Anthro, you can find us at idanthro.com. And if it's movement that you're after specifically, you can go slash movement on the end of that. And you can find out what we're up to, including our facility in Oxley. That's in Brisbane, Australia. If you want to get in touch, you can find us at idanthro.com slash connect. And of course, if you like this video, please do give us a like and subscribe or whatever social network you found this on the appropriate button. Okay, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.